Good morning and welcome to worship here in Balfour Church in our continuing church and quarantine online services. In Psalm 65, 8, it says the whole earth is filled with all at your wonders, where morning dawns and evening fades. You call forth songs of joy. Today another opportunity has dawned and we have that joy to worship our Saviour today. Come and join us as we praise together. Amen.
Mark 9 verses 2 to 9. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. Then he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. He didn't know what to say, they were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and enveloped them and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son whom I love, listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked round, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone of what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Peter said to Jesus, Teacher, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. We can understand those disciples, can't we? That they want to stay there on that mountain top where something so amazing and important has happened. They have just experienced something very unique and they want that experience to last. They want to hold on to it in order never ever to forget it. They want to build a permanent memorial to this amazing event because it should never pale into insignificance. Imagine if that kind of thing happened to you. If you had the kind of religious experience that just takes your breath away and forces you to your knees. A once in a lifetime thing. It would be important to you. You would want to remember every single bit about it and you would want others to know. It's something that maybe not all of us experience, but we can imagine how we might feel because we know how we feel about other special occasions in our lives. Times when we are on top of the world, when all seems right and beautiful, at a wedding for example, especially our own, the birth of a child, a family reunion at a significant birthday, special times with family or friends on holiday, out hill walking, at an organ recital or a concert of our favourite band, when things are going well at work. There are lots of occasions when we might feel like those disciples, wanting to hold on to the moment, wishing it would never end that we could somehow capture it in a way that would make it last forever. How much more would we feel like that if it was one of those close encounters with the Holy One? If we have an awe-inspiring moment of revelation when we feel at one with our God, it will be natural to want to hold on to that. So much of life feels not that special. So often we find ourselves struggling to make sense of it all. So much is about routine rather than rapture. We would want to make the most of it, preserve it. I remember feeling like that at the first time I was a guest at Iona Abbey as a student. I felt I really had learned so much about my faith. I had experienced worship in a completely new way I had sung songs which spoke of love for God and neighbour. I had met the most amazing Christians from all over the world. We had grown in faith and love together. And I did not want that week to end because we would never, ever come together in that constellation of people again. Never, ever be able to share quite in the same way our hopes and fears our doubts, our dreams of a different life with God at the centre of living. I did not want to leave. 
I wanted just to stay there forever and make that special moment last, hold on to those unique people. But of course that's not what Jesus has in mind, not then and not now. He does not even respond to Peter's idea to turn that mountain top into a place of special interest. And maybe that's why the authors of the Gospels do not tell us where this all happened, so no one could turn this into a holy sight. And to top it all, when they come down from the mountain, Jesus tells the three not to tell anyone about this occurrence until he is raised from the dead. So here we have a revelation of the glory of Christ, reminiscent of the day of his baptism, when the heavens opened and the voice of God was heard, and the disciples are not to talk about it. It's a strong message that we are given here about those religious experiences, a word of warning from Christ and from the writers of the Gospels. I think what they are saying is that mountaintop experiences are not enough. They are important because they can reveal something about God to us. They can inspire us. But the real crunch comes when we need to decide what to do with them afterwards. If we build a memorial and put up a plaque, if we stay on the mountain, if we separate that experience from the rest of life, then we are missing the point. Only if we do something with this experience, only if we go back down the mountain into the ordinary life, will our lives be transformed in the way that God intends them to. More or less immediately after this incident, Jesus and his friends are surrounded by a crowd of people from which a man emerges who is looking for help for his epileptic son. There is work to be done. Jesus has come not to give people esoteric experiences to make them feel good. He has come to heal, to preach the kingdom of God, to seek out what is lost. The voice of God that the three hear when the heavens open says almost exactly what was said at Jesus' baptism. This is my own dear son. But it goes on to say, listen to him. That's what really matters. Not holding on, trying to stay on the mountaintop all the time, but listening to him. So what is it then that we should be listening to? Is it what we find in the story just before our text today, when the disciples find it so hard to bear that Christ talks about his coming suffering and death? Is this the voice of God telling the disciples to listen to Christ's words about the suffering servant, to accept that his way is not a way of glory and victory as we know it, but that his way is the way of the cross. Could this be a call to us to listen again to the story of the suffering of Christ, to enable us to enter into the suffering of this world in a different way? Or is this call to listen to him maybe a more general call to us to listen to Christ's teachings about the kingdom of God. Listening to the challenge that he puts before us would in a way prevent us from being lost in rapture at the glory of God that we have seen. Maybe this is the warning that is put before us. Don't get carried away with a religious experience that might be leading you nowhere. Instead, listen to him. Christ will take us on a journey that will truly transform our lives, not by keeping us on a mountain top all on our own some, but by taking us to our neighbour. Next week is the beginning of the season of Lent. After this mountaintop epiphany 
of who Jesus is, we are invited to follow him on the road to Jerusalem, the road to the passion, the suffering, the way of the cross. Christ has shown us that this is the way towards true transformation, towards resurrection and new life. Now it's up to us to decide whether we will listen to his wisdom, his word, and whether we will follow him. Amen. Psalm 103, verses 1 to 13 and verse 22. Praise the Lord my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion? Who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbour his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sin deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Praise the Lord, all his works, everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for your world. May all that is divided by conflict or politics, class or nationality, be united in your peace. We pray for a peaceful world where children grow up without fear where security rests on trust rather than threats and where nations fight against poverty rather than against each other. We pray for all in authority that those who lead us may establish right priorities and that by your wisdom and their vision the world may reflect your kingdom. Healing God, we pray for those who are ill and suffering for all who are worried, for those who are grieving or experiencing trauma, and for a world gripped by the repercussions of a pandemic. May we all know the power of Christ to sustain us and the love of our friends near and distant to support us. You know our greatest fears, our longings and our hopes. Sometimes these are expressed in so many different ways. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Eternal God, you are with us in our gathering. You are with us in our distancing. Hear our prayers and blend our voices together. Unite us by your Spirit. Lord of life, in these difficult times for our families and communities, our nation, our world, we turn to you in faith to seek your guidance and to receive your blessing, knowing that nothing in all creation can separate us from your love made known to us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. Sings my soul, my Savior God to me. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow. We come now to the end of our service and just as Jesus chose to come down from the mountain once again, we follow him back into the world to bring love, healing and peace to our communities. And may the blessing of light be upon you, light without and light within. May the blessed sunlight shine upon you and warm your heart till it glows like a great peat fire, so the stranger may come and warm themselves at it, and also a friend. And the blessing of the living God, whom we call Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you now and always. Amen. Mm -hmm.